Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we are going to be talking about Hedera and HBAR. So let's just dive in and let's start off with this tweet here. So yesterday I tweeted out over on Twitter, I said the amount of articles, PDF files, white papers, etc. that I have read through about crypto and DLT is insane. I've dedicated so much time to this space because I know that this is the greatest opportunity in our lifetime. Tens of trillions of dollars will pour into this space. Patience. And, you know, I, I, I think a lot of people think that crypto is going to be this this market that, all right, yeah, sure, we hit $3 trillion. Okay, yeah, sure, maybe we hit $10 trillion. But what happens after that? It's going to all go to zero. It's going to wash out. It's not going to be anything special. And I think a lot of people aren't seeing the true value here. Um, tokens and projects like Hedera are a game changer to the sense that, you know, crypto right now, as we look at it, kind of has this bad sort of reputation around it. Oh, there's meme coins, there's scam coins, there's this, there's that. Um, but when we look at tokens like Hedera, it's changing the overall landscape on how we look at this space. Hedera is working with prestigious names like DLA Piper, uh, like Google, IBM, um, Aberdeen. There's so many major names tied to it. And I do think that this is changing the overall reputation for the space as well in a good way. Um, if we go over here, though, to Hedera's recent post where it was quoting Chainlink God, and he was basically talking about tokenization of RWA's real world assets um, and how they are being issued on public blockchains by a growing number of Web3 projects and institutions alike. Uh, we're starting to see major adoption within this area. Um, Hedera has been empowering major names like Aberdeen, DLA Piper, SB Group, as well as Avery Dennison for a while. And in fact, the first enterprise grade application has gone live on Hedera, which you guys are all aware. Um, and this is just the beginning, right? It's going to start slow at first. And then all at once, we start to see a massive amount of adoption and value being tokenized and being moved over these networks. Now at that time, you know, a lot of people do focus on market cap. A lot of people focus on price. I want you guys to realize that as the network itself uh, starts to grasp a large portion of volume and value, the value and volume will trickle into the price of the asset also gaining value aka that network effect the more the network is utilized the more value that's pushed over that network the more value the token is worth as well because again hbar empowers the entire network of hedera meaning more of the network gets used more of the token gets used meaning hey those network effects are going to be huge so as we do focus on this I do think that tokenization is an area that I think everyone should look at because there's a lot of these markets that are starting to kind of be tokenized and these are not just small markets. These are multi-trillion dollar opportunities and uh, we even do see that being outlined here. I mean, like, first off, a lot of the properties that are enabled by public blockchains, for an example, are atomic settlement, transparency, user control, reduced cost, and also composability. Um, now, right now, as we do focus on DeFi, there's been quite a bit of money that has poured into the DeFi space. But this is just the beginning. When we look down here, we do see when faced with extreme market volatility, rapid deleveraging events, and the collapse of centralized crypto institutions, DeFi remained resilient. And yet, DeFi remains a circular economy disconnected from the global economy and largely fueled by capital rotation games. There is one major exception, stablecoins. By tokenizing US dollar on-chain, we have created a superior version of the dollar, one that is natively digital, programmable, composable, and atomically settled. This is where, or sorry, this is why there is now $132 billion of stablecoins circulating on chain. And yes, this continues to thrive. The DeFi space has proved that this is a huge opportunity, especially outside the norm with the traditional world of finance and currency. Now combine this with tokenization and you see tokenization of real world assets, you start to see things change drastically. Um, and we're starting to see this kind of trickle in it's starting small but like i said all at once we will start to see a lot more value uh being tokenized over these networks one of the biggest opportunities that i've always said on this channel being tokenized is real estate 
Um, and when we look at a lot of what is happening on Hedera already, we're starting to see some large names like Aberdeen already starting to tokenize digital assets and util utilize digital assets over on the Hedera network. We've talked about this many times. This is, uh, again, combined with what Standard Bank is doing in terms of what they're doing with bond markets. Also, they are talking about stable coins. They're talking about CBDCs. They're talking about a lot of things around fiat currency and stuff like that. Um, but then also... We do look at Atma, which has already started to transact over Hedera, and you do see their main focus point here is utilizing Hedera to enable new decarbonization use cases for Atma while driving the adoption of digital ID technologies. Uh, but they are also focused on some huge things around tokenization and tokens themselves, carbon tokens, carbon emission tokens, carbon reduction to tokens, and stuff like that. Uh, this has been a big focus for them. But like I said, real estate. Real estate is the big game changer here because there's already been huge use cases being launched out on Hedera to focus on real estate, but I don't think any of them has really caught on. Uh, we talked about Red Swan CRE for a while. I think that they're utilizing Polymesh, I'm pretty sure. But when we look at what Hedera has been doing recently, I think that this is a huge stepping stone for them. Uh, Toko, which is the, the main one that we've talked about in the past uh, by DLA Piper, they are focused on real estate. In fact, they are really focused on a few areas, but real estate is also one of them. Um, but I did say here the global real estate market is valued at $300 trillion. I strongly believe that within the next 10 years, we will see at least, at least a minimum of 1% of that tokenized on DLT. So if we look at that, that's $3 trillion right there. And that's just 1%. And, I, I, and, and again, I do think that a much larger percentage will be tokenized. I'm just being conservative. You know, just 10% of that would be $30 trillion. Uh, so that's a big game changer, uh, changer in terms of the valuations that we can put on some of these networks. And I also said the multiplier effects of utilization of this technology in industries like real estate is severely overlooked. And I was quoting just a tech guy because he did say, I think the real estate market is changing fast. So now all you had to do was overcome the entry barrier to play the game. Through fractionalization, the market becomes more competitive and liquid. Prices will roam closer around fair value. Tokenized real estate will start behaving more like company stocks. What are your thoughts on this? And I've always said that I think that this is huge. Now, yes, it could take some time. There still needs to be regulations in place with this. There needs to be a lot of things, you know, to really kind of take into accountability when we talk about tokenization of real estate. But I want to say one thing. When we look at this, it also proves to us just how early we are in the game of crypto. Because, again, a lot of these tokens and a lot of these DLT um, assets, they're still very early on in adoption. Um, a lot of people think that we're late to the game. Uh, most of them look at Bitcoin and they look at Ethereum and they're like, well, the prices are already this high, so I'm not even going to touch crypto. And this is what the general public thinks. This is what most retail individuals think. But what they're missing out on is they're looking at, they're not looking at tokens like Hedera. They're not looking at HBAR and what HBAR is doing. They're not looking at Casper and what Casper is doing. They're not looking at these tokens that are changing the world, changing the game, and ultimately disrupting the overall cycle of enterprise and what enterprise are doing, specifically around these internal processes of not only utilizing these tokens for tokenization, but they're also utilizing these tokens for track and tracing technology. They're utilizing these technologies for, you know, digital workflows. This is how big of an opportunity we have in front of us, yet most people are being left behind because they just don't want to do the research. That's why I said initially on, like I've looked through so much around the space and it truly is insane to look at how big of a big of an opportunity this space actually is providing to us. Now, also, like I said, with real estate tokenization, Hedera is ahead of the game. Uh, recently, going back to September of last year, we've seen them announce that a new real estate tokenization platform will be launching on Hedera. And this is with Arcadia Global, uh, which we will talk about in, in a second. But we do see them talking about the main focus point here. The real estate market today is suffering from severe inefficiencies. Large upfront investment costs combined with the cost impact of many intermediaries implies lack of liquidity in the real estate market. The real estate solution will leverage the full Hedera token service, uh, including the native KYC function for local laws and regulation to tokenize properties and in turn fractionalize the ownership of these assets that's also another thing that i do want to mention with dla piper with toco uh there is 
a lot of regulations and local laws that have already taken into accountability on how to get past those barriers to entry. But also we do see here that, you know, there is a lot of native um, functions here that could also step us over those big obstacles to adopt this technology for tokenization of real estate. Um, and if you guys did want to learn more about what Arcadia is doing, for an example, since early 2020, we have been helping SMEs, MNCs, and also VCs attain success in their digital transformation journey. We are a growing network of experts based in 10 different cities across four continents, keen to leverage our collective expertise to support startups and investors in accelerating their digital innovation journey. If you actually look at um, who is behind this, you guys are more than welcome to, but mostly this is... Um, a company that's centered around the globe um, in selective areas and they're also in huge industries they have a lot of experience within some huge industries out there a few of them telecommunication aviation and aerospace fintech supply chain retail healthcare and also sustain uh, sustainability and we do see their expertise so technical expertise blockchain enterprise and public fintech decentralized finance and tokenization and then also we do zbi um ai and also machine learning and here are their business skills as well and you guys are more than welcome to do a little bit more research on arcadia if you want but i'm very excited for this i think that this is actually a big opportunity and if you look at their portfolio around real estate tokenization um you can click that and it will take you over here to what they are doing with hedera and their plan with the collaboration with of course the hbar foundation i think that this is a huge area of opportunity like i said it's a huge market Market. it's a massive opportunity um, but the thing is is that there still is a few of those obstacles that we still need to break over uh, globally this is going to be a harmonized approach I think that once we start to see tokenization of real estate in one area and it really kind of start to catch on I think that's going to spread rapidly I also think that again with a, with a harmonized approach to regulations globally around crypto and crypto solutions, I think that this will help um, really kind of uh, accelerate the adoption cycle of these platforms that could tokenize real world assets and really ultimately change the game around how most people invest and really kind of be a part of these markets. Because again, the real estate market most individuals don't have the capital up front to jump into real estate and invest into it. But once you have that fractionalized approach, it grows those networks and those markets fast. Um, and again, Hedera has been a leading name around this. Uh, I did talk about Red Swan initially on in this video. I've talked about them many times in the past. You can hear how the future of real estate is changing. This goes all the way back to 2019. They've been ahead of the game for a while. Now, this video... Uh, with Red Swan, I don't know if they're still utilizing Hedera. I even tweeted out back in the beginning of this month. I asked them if they were still, you know, utilizing Hedera. I said, can you confirm or deny if you are still working with them? We did not hear anything back from them. Uh, but listen closely to this video from uh, the CEO of Red Swan on just how disruptive this technology could be for the real estate market. And by the way, at this point in time, there was basically no um, uh, engagement with Hedera on Twitter. So you find that the, we call private investors, Reg D and Reg S investors, both domestic and foreign, have a hard time putting their money into those quality assets. So they are, they're have to go and then put their money into smaller projects, uh, mostly class B, class C, that have a little bit more hair on them, a little bit um, more risky prospects. And they also have to find operators who probably aren't on the class A level or the national recognized partners. And so they're, they're putting risk on that side as well. And thirdly, for private investors, they typically invest in a project. They have to stay in that project for five to seven years, a uh, whole period, and they can't get out. And that's a big risk for them as well because they have life changes where they need their capital. Their capital is pretty stuck into those properties. And uh, so that's a big part of their issue that we're trying to correct with the liquidity. On the building owner side, they also have the problem with having a lot of capital cash trapped inside their properties. If you take a property that's $50 million and let's say it has $25 million worth of a bank loan, that's $25 million worth of equity that's in that property. It's hard for a building owner to recapitalize going to a bank and refinancing to try to increase the loan to value because banks are pretty conservative and will probably keep it around 50 or 60%. The only exit choice they have to pull that cash out and redeploy it for better use is to sell the property. If you you chase after properties and expense a lot of money, you know, what we call pursuit costs, trying to buy properties. 
And then at the end of the day, you might wind up buying one or two properties in a year after spending hundreds of thousands of dollars chasing multiple properties. If the end result for you to, to pull your cash out is to sell that property in you know, four or five years, you have to now redo the whole cycle all over again to go find another property. We think it's better for owners to be able to pull their capital out of the properties, have a remaining maybe 20 or 10% uh, equity remaining in the property, and use that additional equity to go and buy other projects. And that way, they've not so have weighed down uh, with their capital stuck in these assets. So this is what these are the two significant problems we're solving on the building owner side as well as on the private investor side. And this is exactly what we say. It, it allows the real estate market to be more liquid. This is allowing any tokenized market to be more liquid, fractionalized. It, it really is changing the way that all of these markets and industries are going to work. And even with DLA Piper, right? DLA Piper with Toco is a huge game changer because they already are starting to see huge adoption. And they're also seeing regulatory frameworks being put in place in areas like even Dubai. Um, and a lot of the lawyers from DLA Piper are from Dubai, Hong Kong, London, and even Washington, D.C., and they want to leverage their regulatory expertise to not only allow um, these sectors and these industries to understand the knowledge behind virtual assets and things like that, but also to understand the overall disruption that they could have on these markets, on these industries. And it's only going to continue to accelerate as we start to see regulations and regulatory frameworks being put in place, like I've said. Um, all it takes is one area to change the way that these industries and these markets work and it, it, it will spread so fast and i think that you are all aware of that as well with you know the, we start to see these nations working on and building uh cbdc's and all of a sudden boom every single nation wants to do it as well and it's just how this technology works it's going to spread so fast that's why i do think that this is one of the biggest opportunities of our lifetime. And I, I want everyone to be aware of what's happening with this technology. It's not just, oh, how, how, how rich can we get off of this you know, asset in one to two years? I'm in this space forever because I see the value behind this technology. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. If you can get in early, see the vision, see the mission, and also understand how everything works that's why i do take the time out to read these white papers i take the time out to read the pdf files read the articles and do as much research as possible so i highly suggest you guys look into everything around the space if you have time and make sure that you are understanding how everything works just to understand how big this technology will be so with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video because you definitely leave a like, subscribe, and notifications on if you guys have more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As I was up to you all, have a beautiful day, beautiful night. If you guys are in this beautiful world, this has been Nick. Peace out, guys.